Let's go to the 20th chapter in this book, Revelation 20, and read from verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat upon it, from whose face the heavens and the earth fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell were delivered, delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And you can tell God you're not concerned about what this preacher says, but say, Lord, give me some new illumination on this awesome fact of judgment. From Adam, wherever he is right now, in the, in the sands, in the dust, all who are in the grave shall hear the voice of the Son of God. I cross the Atlantic, I guess, about 18 times on the Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, United States, and, and after dinner at night when people went to smoke and drink and dance and everything else, I walked up and down the deck and almost every time I crossed it, I looked overboard and I said, hey, you down there, you're going to get up one day. You buccaneers who died in the Spanish main, uh, stealing treasures, and the folk that sank in the Lusitania, and the people that sank in the Titanic, and, and the people that sank in all the great ships during the war, are the voice of the Son of God, they're going to rise. Millions of them, billions of them, trillions of them. And they're all going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. That's going to be a spectacle. I saw the dead, small and great, every king, every king that's ruled over England, the caliphs of Baghdad, the Maharajas of India, the multimillionaires, the billionaires. They're all going to stand one day. Can you imagine it? At the judgment seat of Christ, to give an account for the deeds done in the body. This is what? This is the King of Kings, and he's the Judge of Judges, and it's the Tribunal of Tribunals, and there's no Court of Appeal after it. The verdict is final. There'll be no biased judgment. The picture of Jesus here is not the picture of a pathetic individual pushed around by anybody who wants to push him around. I think sometimes we think we're going to march up and say, well, you know, Jesus, do you know how many years I served you and how many souls I won for you and how many sermons I preached for you? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, what will he be like in heaven? Well, I'll tell you what the book says he'll be like. It says his hair is as white as snow. His feet are like burnished brass. His face is like the sun in its strength. His eyes are living coals of fire. His tongue is a sharp two-edged sword. And here is John who used to lean his head on the bosom of Jesus and hear that divine heartbeat. The man that I believe knew more about Jesus than anyone else, and when he saw Jesus there on his throne in his majesty, with his face brighter than the sun, with his feet like burnished brass, with his eyes like flames of fire, with his tongue majestic and his voice like the sound of many waters, John, the man who had walked with him and talked with him for three years, says that when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. What do you think you and I are going to do? And we have a picture here of the unholy dead, small and great, standing before God. And when they see him in his awesome majesty, no, they don't worship him, they're terrified. This is a great exposure. Oh, yes, Mr. Kennedy got away with it, whatever happened at Chappaquiddick. The little girl that was drowned, or was she murdered, or was she pregnant, and, and snuffed away. But Mr. Kennedy forgot one thing, it's going to be exposed at the judgment seat of Christ. They couldn't find the 18 minutes on the tapes of Mr. Nixon. Well, I'll tell you, he's got a perfect record of them. <laughs> Can you see those millions of unholy dead? 
All the criminals that ever lived, every prostitute that ever went on the, on, on the tour. Can you, can you think of all the men who make millions out of pornography? Can you think of the pimps who pollute those little girls that go to West 44th, West 42nd Street in New York and they go to all the hell holes? Can you imagine when God takes hold of history and empties it? When every man that ever walked the streets of ancient Babylon with all its lust? Or Corinth, which was just one colossal cesspool of impurity? All that happened at Las Vegas last night is going to be thrown on the screen in eternity? Everything you've done, every idle word you've spoken, every action. Sometimes I look at my Encyclopedia Britannica and I think all that history is going to pass before me in flesh and blood. At the judgment seat of Christ. I'd be interested to see Julius Caesar and Tiberius Caesar. I'd be fascinated when Pontius Pilate stands before Jesus. I think he'll feel less comfortable than Jesus felt standing before Pontius Pilate. They're all going to stand there. The secret archives of our hearts and lives are going to pass before. In hell, if you're given to lust after women, you'll have that lust, but there's nothing to satisfy your lust. If you drink, you'll thirst, but there's nothing to satisfy your thirst. You'll give a king's ransom for one drop of water. There isn't even a drop of water, never mind that precious wine you drink. A soldier said to me one day, do you, do, do, do you really believe that God forgive, can God forgive every sin I've ever committed? I said, he sure can. That is, if you repent of your sin and you plead for the blood of Christ and you ask for mercy, but he says, you know what I'm haunted with? I was in the army so many years in other countries. He, he, and he said, I, 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 I'm horrified to tell you this. But he said, maybe I've got about 30 children around the world. I, I've had sex with so many women, he said, that maybe I'm the father of 30 children around the world. Can God forgive all the rottenness, the corruption of my life? He can. Why? Because this morning Jesus is on a throne of mercy. He shall find grace to help. But when we see him here, he's not on a throne of mercy. He's on a throne of justice. Can you think of all the tribes and nations? Can you think of Pharaoh standing before Jesus Christ and having to account for the massacre? Can you think of Herod the Great having to account for the massacre? Can you think of Hitler having to account for the massacre? Of, uh, we're told of six million Jews. Do you think that Stalin ever dreamed that all the bloody purges he made, he'd have to answer for every precious drop of blood he ever spilled? The psalmist David says, store my tears in thy bottle. I believe that nobody ever spilled a tear, whether it was spilled in, in compassion for souls or it was, it was spilled because of a broken heart. It never fell to the ground. It was stored by God and God's going to count them out one day. God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. And I think we'd better watch this business of, you know, God loves you, God loves you, and all the bumper sticker sloppy evangelism. Sure, God is love. But God also is a consuming fire. Will you remind people of the goodness and the severity of God? Will you remind them that there's a day when mercy is cut off forever? Will you remind them that people pray in hell but nobody ever answers? The dead, small and great are going to stand before God in that awesome day. And the book of memory is going to be open and the Ten Commandments and, and, and other books that God has are going to be open in that awesome day. And there's no mercy. Mercy has gone forever. That great scholar Daniel Webster was once asked, what is the greatest thought? You have a colossal mind. What is the greatest thought that has ever traveled down the corridors of your mind? He said, I've thought many great things, but the greatest thing that I've ever thought of, the most awesome, the most terrifying, the most shattering thought I've ever had is my personal accountability to God one day. We all, without exception, 